today I enjoyed a day with Robert Dakota and Randall Carlson out in the land. And I'm a local and I live in the area. And today we had the advantage of a Native American guy named Bertram who told us all kinds of interesting things about the stuff that I'd seen before. I've been here for a while and I've really enjoyed the landscape and the symbolism that's embedded in the timekeeper's petroglyphs that are written into the stone. And so seeing it through the eyes of those who have never seen it before and are discovering it and the people who have been embedded with that culture for a long time, it was really quite a pleasure to be in the company of a bunch of people who enjoyed themselves doing that. And so I recommend going on one of these tours if you have the opportunity to do so or otherwise just enjoy the videos that they put up about it because it's really quite informative stuff and I find it illuminating even if I'm you know a local and know these places have been here several times before so discovery is always available to us and these guys are really showing us some really cool stuff so I recommend doing it Hello, I'm Robert Dakota with Worldviews Media, and we're here with Rockwell Austin, who attended the Sacred Geometry Conference, uh, Sacred Geometry Weekend with Randall Carlson, and also joined us for the day trip. He's got some things to say about how it went this weekend. How'd it go for you? It was fantastic. If you really want to gain a better understanding of the world and, and the underlying meanings and how everything fits together, then I highly recommend Randall Carlson. Uh, the day trip with Randall uh, uh, was fantastic. We started off with V Bar V Ranch uh, and the petroglyphs. We had a fantastic experience with our guide, Bertram. Highly recommend uh, if you really want to kind of understand what you're looking at on those petroglyph petroglyphs. Uh, Bertram is the man to take you through that. Uh, and then we went to Montezuma's castle, which was megalithic almost. And then we went to Montezuma's well, which was a fantastic experience. Some of us even dunked our heads in the, wa in the water. And then we went to Tuzagut, uh, and that was just an amazing experience. We got to go up on the roof, uh, so we got the full bird's eye view, uh, which was fantastic. And uh, I recommend doing this and going on as many trips as you can with this group. Uh, my name is Bertram Tzawatawa. I come from the village of Old Araibi, located on 3rd Mesa known to be the continuously inhabited community in North America. I'm uh, a member of the Corn Clan, and I am like a one-man operation on the Hopi Reservation of showing of the petroglyphs or the natural canyons that are, you know, found on our land. And with those rock symbols, as the researchers refer to them as, you know, just share of the common interpretations of those rock symbols and what they mean to our people. Um, just maybe other programs I did was, you know, agriculture, uh, understandings, uh, even when the villages were open, you know, sh show of some of the villages there, two villages in the Hopi area. And, and even now, you know, there's just, you know, this collaboration of going to other places during the maybe summer times or different times of year for viewing these other ancestral sites. And uh, there is also uh, one of the upcoming events happening uh, to have um, sharing of information in forms of the, the talks that will be conducted by the different individuals. And so myself, you know, just to share of what, you know, we commonly understand in our Hopi views and teachings and understandings of what you know, these different concepts of what's occurring is all the, you know, I mean, all these effects of what's happening on Mother Earth's surface, just showing us different signs, so. But anyway, talking about different times and time periods would be uh, what I would be, you know, sharing of that information, sharing of the general descriptions given uh, by our Hopi people, but just clarify it with other uh, information. Uh, I just, had chosen, you know, just to title it as uh, Hopi Time because I will, you know, again share of, you know, what I view as the oral teachings would parallel from, you know, um, we only know what is um, shared of the understanding. So, 
you know, that'll be my topic of discussion because we talk about four worlds, so that's, you know, to share of that information, of the, those descriptions. Yeah, being a member of the Corn Clan, you know, we're always instructed to, <laughs> you know, keep planting those seeds, but, uh, you know, a lot of the weather conditions, uh, you know, deterred with some people or, you know, they did plant, but it was totally parched dry in some areas to do the planting or depositing of the seeds. So it, it just varied by, you know, the individual farmers of how, you know, they kept up with, you know, say like deliberately, you know, watering items because it was so dry, you know, here in Arizona. And genetics of our seeds are very, you know, more organic ancestral genes, some connecting with the direction to the south or into South America. So, yeah, we have a unique seed and land location where we live at in of our Hopi villages. So it's, you know, just that way, like in teachings from any uh, religious teaching, you know, or world teaching, you just have your heart set to it and then, you know, you're putting your own energy into those um, seedlings, which later become, you know, the plants and help with nourishment for food. You know, just a staple of our Hopi people, of the blue corn. Okay, yep. Thank you very much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Mm -hmm. Bye -bye.